typed your name all lowercase, you wouldn't care? No. You could yes, not sir. even type my name, and I won't care. That's Ladies and gentlemen, the match begins. Here we go. We got Lumi. We, oh, a handshake. Oh, wow. Oh, what my. respect he has before he destroys him. I love it. <laughs> and we're going to see this beautiful aggro deck versus oh, my. the Keith the Bold boys. That, speaking of bold, that is quite bold to choose this deck. It's the hardest one. It is the most difficult deck to master. You have a lot of ways to mess this deck up. It can be extremely confusing, and a lot of the heroes can die. But play it right, Suns fan. In the hands of a true champion like our Minnesota masochist over here, <laughs> it could be pretty good. Minnesota masochist. I like that. Thank you. So he does have Battlefield Control, which is a card that comes with Jamoy, your Jamoy, boy. Jamoy, your boy. He doubles strafing runs, so kills a creep. Of course, Ogre ends up destroying him, but he still lives at 2 <laughs> HP. Oh, this is rough. This is about as this good as... This worst is real case, good. Worst case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere to go for Sir Lacan in this one, and Bristleback gets an automatic hero kill, giving him two armor. She gonna make it hurt, though. Yeah. It, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> <laughs> she will die. She was gonna die anyway. Now you have a creep on the board. But then again, anytime a creep spawns, it's gonna make it weaker. Yep. Uh, if you had the arrow... It would have been really good. It would have killed Bristleback, so maybe it was worth it. It's tough sure. to say right now. He does have Grazing Shot, which will now not do anything against Bristleback. But yes. what if it did? Yes, what What if he could kill his Jamoy? See, this actually isn't the worst thing in the world. Think about this, okay? No. You kill Jamoy. No. He's only out for the next round. Yeah. Right? You, come, you get him back immediately. You don't have to waste his time. He's but a busy boy. He is a busy boy, but who do you place in that? I guess you nobody. Know that, that creep could have spawned if he killed Jamoya boy. <laughs> My goodness gracious, you're a real genius, Suns fan. No, but this mid lane is already a disaster. Yeah, it's real. You bad. were hoping for a creep to spawn because then it would get plus two damage, which actually would have been enough to kill Bristleback. Yeah. Nada. Well, he's gonna sacrifice his Zeus. Yep. And the ability to it's kill. Not necessarily Bristleback. a sacrifice. Uh, yeah, we'll see about that. And it's a sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't now, pity okay, pity. Okay, it's it's still okay. If he gets one card in this deck, allowing him to have three mana, he can kill that Bristleback. Oh, what yeah. a lucky boy. He okay. needs to cast two, though. Right? He does, but it's okay, because it's only one mana for Battlefield Control and one mana for Better Late Than Never. Zeus's passive does one piercing damage per spell. As That's long right. as he uses both in that second lane, he won't make it. The only issue is there's this item. Why don't you highlight that bad boy? Wow. Well, he does have no, that. Lumi that. <laughs> he's, I'm pretty sure he's going to No, know. Lumi's going to put it on the bold. Now you've ruined yeah, you the Yeah, you really, you re he's in a lot of trouble here. <laughs> Keith the bold, my boy. What is he? Oh, no. All right. He used the, uh, the creep, so our dreams of having any chance of killing Zeus are over. Yeah. White dragon gives him a permanent minus two Imagine armor. if you had killed him last round. He'd be coming up next round. My goodness gracious, son. Next man. level plays, man. You're truly a genius. I mean, some plays that actually look really dumb can really benefit you in this game, which is the, the coolest part. You can think of a lot of strategies. I mean, you've thought of a lot of really dumb strategies that have kind of worked. Thank you. Maybe not here, but in private. Oh, um, now he is making a bit of a mistake here. Battlefield control, you can y target it on your enemies. So he could make Bristleback yep. not hit him and uh, get rid of this Necro Nevermore, the Disciple of Nevermore, uh, which would actually help him out a lot because he doesn't need this negative two armor anymore. That time is quite over. So yeah. I would use your battlefield control if I were you. <laughs> but Well, that's the thing. Uh, there's, there's a couple cards in the game. Yep. For these decks, New Order is a similar card to battlefield control, but the difference is New Order you can only use on allies. Battlefield control, the reason it's so good because you can use it on literally any unit. That's correct. Manipulating where they attack. So Zeus will make it another day here. And uh, that's actually super important. Yes, it is. Because now, next time around, you have a blue hero to cast. Uh, I'm looking at the other side, actually. I was going to say Conflagration. Conflagration. But that is for the White Dragon. That's true. Oh, OK. High level play here. Listen up. Yep. Grazing shot on your own creep here would heal up the Necrophos, allowing him to live through this lane. Killing your own unit? Maybe not a bad idea, as long as it oh, kills that creep next just, to Necrophos. Just kill this one next to Luna. 
What? The passive only works on enemy units that died. Oh, that's right. Enemy units that died. That's well, right. Okay, so let's, let's, let's pretend it worked oh, the way God. that you said. Okay, why would you shoot your own unit anyway? <laughs> why you shut up, Satan? <laughs> I'm just saying, if something died in that lane, yeah. Necrophos would have made it. But right. he's gonna keep. Uh, he's gonna keep that grade. You're doing operator. great, buddy. Thank you so much. Sunset. It's always great to <laughs> cast with someone that will call you out for if not I, even a mistake. I don't. I don't want to give out wrong information. Well, I, I know we're not here to. I mean, but it could still teaching work. In the correct way to do things. When you're the correct way. To make me sad. Gr grade one. <laughs> I hate you so Good much. One. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So Earthshaker is going to be deploying here mm. for the White Dragon, and for the other side we have. It's actually hard to see on our screen. But I believe it's Crystal Maiden and Sor Lacan. Ooh. I think everybody's going mid. This is going to be a big, big bad showdown here in the mid lane. Heck yeah. The problem with this though, from the challenger side, is oh, no. Crystal Maiden and Sor Lacan are very, very squishy. Oh no. And there's some arrows in there. It seems. Yeah. Some bad arrow luck here, and he's opening himself up for White Dragon in this first lane. He seems to have been abandoning it, and that's exactly what a red deck with Red Mist Pillager wants to hear. Yeah. They want to see that lane abandoned so that they can ball out of control. When he hits that tower, he's going to get another one, and then another one, and then another one. And this is not what you want to see if you're playing the aggro deck. You don't want to spend your resources. I mean, you kind of have to at this point. you got to put a hero in this lane now at some point to stem the bleeding. Oh. I mean, this is this isn't the worst. You're killing a hero at the very least this is because of this arrow. This is not good. Sorlacon wants to hit towers. Yes. She doesn't want to kill heroes. She doesn't want to help anybody. She wants to slam dunk towers, and every time that she doesn't, it's this a is sad a good day. teaching moment actually. So, Blade of the Vigil yep. is. Why don't you highlight that bad boy? Sure. It's an item that gives two attack and two cleave. So he's going to put it onto Crystal Maiden, but you'll notice that it doesn't actually add any damage to Bristle nope. because he has the two armor which blocks it. So the the armor is based on each instance of damage that's being done. So yes, good teaching moment right there. The cleave is going to be blocked out. We are going to be able to get those dimensional portals going. And if he can cast one more spell, he, he would be able to kill that bristle. But he cannot. He has yes, used he his spell. No, he he can use uh, grazing shot, right? That's no, a blue spell. Not a blue spell. Yeah, static field only procs on blue spells. He can use that grazing shot right now to clear out that red mist pillager. He has been saving it for a while. It would be a pretty good move, allowing Sorla Khan to I think she would actually now hit the tower. He ruined the arrow. If you put a unit yes. in front of an arrowed thing, you erase that arrow. That's right. And then if you can kill that unit, it can hit the tower. So White Dragon might have made a serious error as long as he grazing shots that creep in the next 10 seconds. We will see if he does it. He's hovering over a grazing shot. Will he do it to get that massive damage on the tower? And of course, the reason that he, as we're going to see it killed, the reason that the minion was even placed to begin with is because by doing that, like you said, redirecting the damage means Earthshaker lives. Yes. So now it's kind of a, which is more important. Sorla Khan's now hitting your tower, but Earthshaker lives. So. And uh, that blew up in his face pretty bad then. Yeah. I mean, Sorla Khan, like we talked about, her passive warmonger, yep. four damage extra when hitting towers. She's a beast, man. I love this hero. One yeah. of my favorites. Very strong. And all these different creeps as well. I mean, that tower is just absolutely decimated after that. Decimated. Yeah, Goodness <laughs> gracious. Uh, decimated is not a, a hillbilly so word. The way that you said it was. Absolutely decimating <laughs> that tower. And uh, an answer has been put up by White Dragon, though. That would be this card, Sunspan. Yes, that's a good card. Conflagration. Yep, there, there's definitely an R before the, the G there. You know what? I'm not casting with you anymore. Okay? Can so this is surprising if uh, Lumi actually goes for this. I mean, we'll see. He's already essentially won this first lane in all likelihood. Yeah. Um, not necessarily, though, because he could still put a couple of heroes here to stem the bleeding like I was talking about. But this mid lane is almost beyond repair for Lumi. Eight health against an aggro deck. You have to think that eventually it will go down at some point. Yeah. So do you expend resources? It looks like he's going to do it. Interesting. So uh, yeah, in most scenarios, you would just let that one go. But he does have two damage on all those creeps. Crystal Maiden is going to die instantly. So make, maybe he's looking to take that lane as well. Uh, ooh, very, very lucky draws for our challenger here. None of the Red Mist Pillagers are hitting anything right now, yeah. which is pretty good. He also got a Disciple of Nevermore. If he can put that in lane two, or he can put it now in lane three, assuming that lane two is going to be taken, got even more damage against those towers. So we'll see what Lumi has to answer for it. It see does have six. Oh, what my. have you done? Oh, my. <laughs> Everyone's killing each other. Uh, not really, though. Our boy, yeah, Keith, Keith the, the Bold, bold. is he, living. I mean, he again. always lives, right? Uh-huh. He has fighting instinct just in case. 
doesn't need to use it quite yet. That's like the finisher, right? It really is. You're about to win. You need to put Fighting Instinct on to ensure that you'll feel good about your victory at the very least. So uh, White Dragon is going to put on that Fighting Instinct, one of the most powerful cards. <laughs> <laughs> look, I mean, sure it doesn't do a lot, but look at that picture, man. It's Centaur. He's owning a Centaur. He is That's strangling ridiculous. a Centaur with one, one hand. hand. Goodness gracious, what a man. I mean, the thing to remember, and I said this yesterday, you have to balance it out somehow. His stats are ungodly. They're really good. Very good. So uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, I think your best move here is to actually swap the Earthshaker and the Luna with the Phase Boots. This item right here, Red Mist Maul, is going to be doing some damage to the tower only if it's, uh, you know, blocked up. So why not sacrifice your Earthshaker, keep your Luna in the game, build up those charges on Eclipse. All right. We'll see what he decides. Actually, it, it, this paid off dividends so far for Lumi Good. because you, even though it was complete luck, yeah. you blocked Sorlacon with Luna, which is huge, mm -hmm. and you're preventing this tower from going down. It, again, it's going to go down at some point in all likelihood, sure. but delaying it one round is huge against an aggro deck especially. He's going to go for the Eclipse. Not that many charges. He's going to kill a couple of oh, And Sorlacon. No. Oh, my. That was... Complete luck. He's still going to get four damage, but he is going to go for that tower. Man, two Boomy. of those charges not hitting that Sorla. That would have been a completely different situation. Somebody's been it. eating their Wheaties today. Indeed, indeed. I oh. believe that is the saying. Yes, for luck. <laughs> Absolutely. Eating the Wheaties. The Wheaties. Well, the Wheaties have been whittled down as Whittle. we continue our match here today. Bristleback is now available for our friend Luminous. And uh, a very powerful round here, Sunspan. Yeah. Alert, alert. Oh, no, do not put that just in that last lane. <laughs> no, you want to put that in the first lane. You don't want to. Okay, well, seven mana uh, allows our friend here to be able to use Thunder God's Wrath, which yeah. does damage to everyone in every single lane. If he had put it in the first lane, potentially, he could have activated it in this round, and he could have got a few kills here. Double kill. Double right. kill, in fact. Uh, but he's going to put that in the third lane and just kind of wait it out to see what happens. Uh, not too much going on in lane one, though. Have you noticed that anytime Keith the Bull's in the lane, it's just abandoned? It's no just gone. <laughs> nobody wants to be in that lane anymore. Who wants to be next to this guy? Look, he strangles a centaur with Yes, yeah, so let's one get hand. back to the art on that card. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't have a lot of options here in this lane for Lumi. He can't put I, I, cleave I on. disagree. He can cast Fighting Instinct again. He That's could. a double Fighting Instinct on Keep oh the Bold. Oh my goodness, Fighting Instinct once again on Keep the Bold. And he does have Phase Boots. He could choose to phase over to this creep and deal 10 damage. No need. He wants to punish the creeps. <laughs> no need. Make sure, the, like, I killed a centaur with one hand. You think you have <laughs> any chance against me, good sir? Indeed. Good sir, that's good how he's Good sir? <laughs> Do you dare to question? Well, Thunder God's Wrath Thunder coming God's out wrath. on Zeus for, I think that's just a BM. Uh, only one hero was hit. Well, that that does indicate that perhaps he has another one in in, in, his, uh, in his hand. Luminous stacking up this damage on this free tower here and using all the items that he has because there's nothing to contest. There's nothing to lose. And it goes to our challenger who does have a Thunder God's Wrath and could use it right now to kill Zeus, saving his own life and uh, getting a few other heroes. Well, no, no, those got healed up, didn't they? Oh, he goes for the armor play, and this is going to well, that was cost him dearly. <laughs> Boom! Remember, piercing damage will go through any armor, completely ignores it, and as a result, instead of, it was actually a, a four, no, I guess it's a two hero turnaround. He could have killed two heroes at the beginning of the round, yep. but instead, he loses two of his own. You know, I think that was a little too aggressive by Lumi. He used two Thunder God's Wrath to kill a Zeus. I mean, none of the other heroes got affected. They're all coming out right now. That's a good Four point. Four heroes are going to be dropped in. If he just gets one blue hero in lane one, one blue hero in lane two, that's a double Thunder God's Wrath. That's going to kill uh, two heroes. Yeah, potentially. And the fact that Lumi expended two blue heroes to the mid lane means that he can't have a blue hero in every lane. That's right. right. Typically speaking in this deck, other than Time of Triumph, most of your big, big game cards at the late later stages of the game are blue cards. So this first uh -oh. this first uh -oh. lane looks salvageable, although he's looking towards mid, it seems. You probably don't want to try to salvage the mid, uh, especially with only 17 health in this red miss mall. It's going to go through five damage every time, no matter what. But OK, we'll see how it happens here. Uh, don't sound too, uh, too happy with that. I'm worried. I'm worried. I'm optimistic. Oh, that's very nice. But <laughs> optimism has won very uh, little battles. Oh my. 
There's the Thunder God's Wrath, so he's gonna get the one on Zeus in the third lane. Sure. Deals four damage to Keith the Bold. Don't forget to use my boy Jamoy's passive ability, Wisdom of the Elders. It allows you to draw one card. One single card. One singular card every four rounds. Again, you might say that's not great, but remember, he has by far the best card of any of the creep heroes. Indeed. Battlefield Control. It is an amazing card. Indeed it is. Unfortunately, not going to be able to be used here. One thing you guys might not know is that if there's not a card next to you, stuff like Battlefield Control doesn't really help you out. If there was a creep, sure, but you can't tell a hero to attack a tower. And you can't tell a hero to attack its own creep. That That's would right. be... That would be pretty broken. Now, that would be a heck of a spill. Let's make that into the next patch. Please. All right. Here we go. Jaboy, ya boy, is dead. And our friends in the middle lane oh, are... That's a fissure. ...not doing well. So, again, Earthshaker has great cards. The Echo Slam we've talked about so many times. The fissure has a four-round cooldown, which is really long, but extremely powerful, as you can see. It'll stun enemy neighbors and... Being stunned is essentially disarming and silencing. You pretty much can't do anything. You can equip items, but you can't use them. And unfortunately for our challenger, there's literally nothing that can be done in this. Ugh. That is the third Thunder God's Wrath. They got not... all three. That's pretty lucky, Suns fan. That's not luck. That's skill. There you go. Uh, you know how we could have won this game as our challenger? Uh, potentially, maybe putting down a steam cannon in that first lane would have been able to shoot. And then uh, maybe had... Uh, could have had initiation on the second lane, allowing him to do a Thunder God's Wrath and shooting the Earthshaker, preventing that stun. Yeah, but Steam Cannon actually very powerful against pretty much any deck that has red heroes. They're super sure. beefy, lots of times getting tons of armor, which it will ignore, obviously. And having multiples of them is pretty disgusting. Yep. I've witnessed many a time. So he's actually going to go for the Oglogi Vandals here. He could have put down that Steam Cannon yet again, but the double Oglogi ain't a bad move. Not only do they do four damage with their attack, but they also have that passive ability that shoots the tower with four damage as well. Oh, dear. So, yeah, that's a decent amount of damage coming out of this tower, but it's time to try him, Sunfan. That's right. He's just doing this to make sure Bristleback just can't die. He's not really going to be doing that much damage to the tower, uh, especially if he's blocked in this case, only four siege. But he does get charges from Book of the Dead because a melee creep did die next to him. So he'll be able to spawn another 2-2 uh -huh. zombie, I believe. Yeah. Which can be great at blocking. I mean, the challenger right now is going against a 4 health tower and a 6 health tower. He's so close. He is super close. If this deck just had a little bit more siege, he would have a very easy time. But uh, at this point, he's got to make his way through these gigantic creeps, and he only has Zeus to work with. Not a great situation, and uh, he does have Thunder God's Wrath, however. So he's going to have to commit that Zeus in the middle lane. This is all about initiation. He cannot do anything initiative. in the first... It, oh, initiative? Initiative. Hmm. Initiation. Yes, both are interchangeable words. Not in this game. All it right. literally says initiative. Well, you know, you don't have to talk about that. Okay. That's just a way that some people pronounce it. <laughs> just like the coup de grace? Le coup de grace? All right. Okay, our boy here has got some major damage. He does have an Eclipse. If he does activate that, that's pretty much over ski. Uh, he could have a little bit of fun and not do it. He just passed, by the way. And Ooh. he did not cast Thunder God's Wrath. Well, you know, I believe that it was uh, not his turn yet. Oh, he did pass. But he did pass. That's unfortunate for everyone involved. Well, he was just using Zeus as a body, I suppose. Sure and then quickly realized that it wasn't going to make much of a difference. Oh, it might have been the big play. All right, let me talk you through this. One hero in the first lane. He's got th four heroes coming back. So you put one hero in the first lane. It's a black hero with steam cannon. You can shoot that at the Earthshaker. Then in the second lane... Well, uh, not to stop. I, I think the reason he probably didn't cast anything because he doesn't care. He doesn't want these heroes to die anymore. Mm. Power is lost. Killing them actually helps Lumi. Mm. So they end up spawning, but please continue. Okay, well that's a pretty good point there, but <laughs> suffice it to say. Suffice to say. Puts Jaboy in the third lane yep. to try to stem that assault right there. Okay. He does have a lot of options here. A lot of global attacks. Thunder God's Wrath, he's got Steam Cannon, and he's got all three heroes coming out. So it's about how he decides to use it. Perhaps he'll put a blue in lane one, pop in that Thunder God's Wrath, put one black hero in lane two to get himself that Steam Cannon, and see how it goes. 
Ya boy, ya boy. Oh, wait, I'm reading this wrong. These guys are coming out next time. No, this no, time. No, he just hasn't. Thank uh, goodness. The way that we look at it, it's a little confusing. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Committing two heroes to that last lane. Interesting choice there. This game's actually way closer than we're making it sound. Yeah. This is super. He just needs to do a few more damage to the towers. Four and six. I don't know how he's getting around any creep, though, in that mid lane. Going to be pretty Ooh. rough here. Oh, the flag. Oh. The flag. It looks pretty good here. So he could have cast Thunder God's Wrath right now. That would take out Earthshaker from that middle lane, buying him a little bit of time and damaging all the other heroes. Okay. That's a good start. What else you got? Well, Gets two mana back because Crystal Maiden somewhere in the field. That's correct. He could also Frostbite, but he might want to save that, Suns Fan. I want to save that Frostbite. Plus, it doesn't actually kill Keith because of the armor. Sure, but it would save our boy Jamoy. That is true. Battlefield Control also being able to be used. He could use Battlefield Control to move that so that it didn't die, but he could also use that in the, the last lane. Eh, I guess I wouldn't do much. There's a lot of choices. Let's just put it that way. Let's put it that way. But I think, I think you're right about Steam Cannon being super important. He's going to have to cast that in the mid lane. Uh, as, along with the grazing shot, if there's any opportunity, perhaps uh, Zeus would die to... Uh, so there's no there's no good choices for grazing shot at this stage. Yeah. Armor is just super powerful right now. Yep. Let's talk about Frostbite and how powerful it, see it is. Uh, it doesn't seem like too great of a card. Do two damage and disarm. But in a situation like he's in on that last lane, it's imperative. Because he is able to stun up that Bristleback, meaning that all that siege damage, all that damage that's coming out, not going to matter at all. Steam Cannon is launched, and we're probably going to see Sorlacon die. I'm wondering if Lumi is actually going to commit something to it or just let it happen. We'll find out soon, but... Uh, this is definitely the play. You guarantee lethal on this tower. Yep. You could potentially use it on Zeus in the third lane, but I, it's way more risky. He could kill the Luna, getting the lethal on this tower right now, or he could kill Zeus. It's a big decision. If that Zeus lives, he has some powerful spells. We know, look at how many cards. He, he doesn't know what he has, but. All right, he goes okay. for the Luna. Going for the lethal. And Sorla will take this tower for her own. Yeah. Not a bad use of time there. Grazing shot onto the Zeus with one right. HP. Oh. If only he had if only. a heart stopper right now. Oh my goodness gracious. Or another grazing shot. He could take out that Zeus and things yeah. would be so much easier in that next lane. All right, we'll see what he has to do here. He's going to put Assault Ladders. Why not? He got some free mana. Why not? Yep. Right now with this deck, you're you're getting blocked completely from all these units, which is one of the, the downsides of playing the aggro. You don't I really have a lot of units. But the Eclipse comes through. Will it be enough damage, though? Uh, yes, more than enough, in fact. No, I mean to take the t tower. I'm not an idiot. Oh, the, t <laughs> <laughs> the tower? No, not, not <laughs> quite. Not quite yet, my friend. He'll probably cast a Foresight here. Does have a couple of zombies, of course, from that Book of the Dead. Yep. Whipped on Bristleback. Uh, probably will draw a couple cards and then try to go for the lethal next time around. Does have Broadsword, of course. Poor we'll get four attack. <laughs> All right, sure. It actually, gets a, it's going to be a six damage, uh, about six damage away from, from killing this bad boy. Yep. This is, uh, of course, he's going to be using a little bit of cunning plan there, cunning plan. Why would he use that swap position with neighbors? Because it does draw a card. It gives him a little bit of extra ammunition on what could very well be the final round of this pretty exciting game. 11 yeah. rounds have gone by. I got to say, it's been a heck of a ride. Absolutely. A little bit surprised he didn't. Did he equip the broadsword? Oh, he did. Okay. So as much damage as possible, and remember, Bristleback has time of triumph on him, so he's going to be doing four damage siege no matter what, unless yep. you get a frostbite or something like that on him. That's right. But the problem is there's only one hero being deployed for the challenger, so this is going to be a tall order to say the least. It will be pretty tough. Frostbite is definitely going to be needed to be used on the Bristleback above anybody else because he does have that cleave damage, but at the same time, Zeus is doing some major damage as well. So we got to see what our boy has here. Could he have enough to take the whole thing? i doing the math right now, but I'm not going to spoil it for you. He actually is closer than you think, my friend. No, I have, I'm, that's Are you, oh, you weren't being sarcastic. I was not being sarcastic. Oh, OK, so we're not going to spoil it. We're not going to spoil it, ladies okay. and germs. Now, don't forget the steam imp cannon improvement. Oh, no. He that's right, the steam cannon. Don't hit the button, whatever you do. <laughs> 
the steam cannon right here can do some incredible things for this guy. Four damage, could get that Zeus down yeah. to a low enough. Just don't forget to hit steam cannon, my friend. I'm pretty sure you'd use it on the creep to allow Zeus to hit the tower. No way. You don't use so? it on Zeus, and then uh, you s hope that you can ca cast yeah, Frostbite. You, you can hope and pray, that's true. There's a couple different scenarios, you're right. Because if you, if you end up killing Zeus after casting one spell with that one piercing damage, that's then right. it takes seven damage off the board. Listen here. If you kill the creep, you give yourself an opportunity to try to tie the game. Forget about that, all right? Next <laughs> round. Okay. He just has to survive one more round. He is going to shoot the Zeus. All right. Giving him one HP. Yep. If he can just survive past that first initiating round, he will kill the Zeus. If he can frostbite that Bristleback, only two damage is being dealt to his tower, and he makes it one more round, Sunspan. Well, he can also cast two spells to kill the creep in front of him. That's him correct. Allowing him to tower as well. It comes down to this. Does Lumi? Have a way to kill this man in one fateful turn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you built it all up. <laughs> and there's the eclipse. But what if he didn't? Yeah, it was, that was very, very close. I mean, Lumi's tower ends up with six HP, so that might be the closest game of the day, in fact. I have to say so. That was a, a heck of a job by both our champion and our competitor. Can we get a round of applause for potentially the closest game I've seen all day? Perhaps.